Sergei Karyakin is the first and only Russian to win the Dakar Rally on an ATV. Not bad. Both an ever-growing list of injuries, an ever-growing list of family members, and the constant hunt for sponsorship, you think the guy might want to take a break and walk away a winner. No, instead he says that he's going to become a champion in two more vehicle categories. Can he do it? Well, anything's possible. Right now, we're with Sergei at the Can-Am X race in Karelia. But his journey to becoming a racing champion started 2,400 kilometers away in Yekaterinburg. It's our shop, it's not so big uh, as you see, but in this shop we make victories for Dakar, we make victories for Silkway, mm -hmm. Can-Amex race, Russian Championship, World Cup. So, you know, it's not the matter of the size, it's the matter of, uh, you know, of the quality. Sergei Karyakin, 28 years old, born, raised and resides in Yekaterinburg, Russia. Champion race car driver, businessman, husband and father of three. As you see the quads here, three mm -hmm. quads, they have three different sizes. They mm -hmm. are meant to, to be used with, uh, we make, you know, like a um, quad school for, oh, the, for okay. the kids. Ah, so I we see. travel all around Russia mm -hmm. and bring quads there for the kids who doesn't have parents or in, you know, difficult situation in their life. Ah, uh, so we work with them to make sure that they will be in front of sports, you know, they will be, um, connecting their life with the sport mm -hmm. because you know the most the biggest problem with them is uh, that they in future they choose alcohol tobacco and all this kind of stuff oh yeah when you have nothing to do you drink yeah so, yeah. yeah so that's, that's why you know on my on my experience I try to give them the same which I saw in my childhood you start off as a kid on a motorcycle so yeah. how old were you uh, I think I was around eight years old uh, do they make a motorcycle sized for eight euros, or was it like an ad like a Soviet adult motorcycle? Uh, no, it was a Japan motorcycle. Uh -huh. We brought it from Vladivostok, mm -hmm. uh, direct in Russia, and it was for adults. And uh -huh. I was climbing on this like this, and I had to start right away not to fall on the side. Mm -hmm. So there were only adult uh, motorcycles, quads, and well, in Russia. I yeah. didn't see smaller ones in Russia because uh, it wasn't so easy to bring inside uh, of our country 20 years ago. Yeah. So I was happy to see the, the motorcycle. It was already broken. It was, you know, like, <laughs> pa, 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 but I was still driving it and I was so fond of it. And I was driving, driving. And that's why I connected my life with all this racing stuff mm -hmm. because I just love it and that's it. This is buggy. Uh, a buggy. S I SSV see. and there are millions and millions of names of it. SXS, SSV, yeah. buggy. And SSV stands for? Side-by-side -side vehicle. Okay. So okay. like ATV, it's all-terrain vehicle. Yeah. Here is side-by-side -side vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's really fast. You see how the wheel travel is. You see huge yeah. A-arms. It's a really powerful machine. We yeah. make some modifications for it to make it more rigid, mm -hmm. uh, more powerful, and of course for better handling and to make it safer, for sure. Because when you drive 150 kilometers per hour and you hit something, it's uh, not the best thing yeah, to... Yeah, I can imagine. Once we've been sitting with my father behind, in front of TV and they were showing Dakar Rally mm -hmm. and he says, why don't you want to try? And you know, the economic situation in Russia was better and we've paid 40 rubles per one euro. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I asked the guys how much will it go, is it going to be? So, French team gave me price 45,000 euros. So there was no my personal mechanic, no personal this, no way to live. You live in the tent. So it's the cheapest ever available way to travel to Dakar. And 
in uh, in rubles it was two and a half million rubles so it's now I've got ten times more list so uh, the budget for Dakar for only one race so with the team is, is getting bigger and the price for participating is getting bigger also. Well, I can see on your shirt that you seem to have a few sponsors there, but when you first went to the first Dakar rally, yeah. basically it's kind of one of those things where uh, in order to get to the Dakar rally, you need to have sponsors, yeah. but to get to sponsors, you need to be in the Dakar rally and do well. Yes. So how did you solve that uh, paradox? So sponsors are not really interested in racers driving, you know, like Russian races. They're interested in driving a Dakar. But if you never drove a Dakar, they're not interested in you. So my first Dakar I did with the help of my father and my personal money. So uh, that was my first Dakar and I finished six or seven. And it was a phenomenal result for the way uh, of, for the quad I had. It was a complete junk. <laughs> I really, I can, I remember the way the quad drove and it was so bad. Well, you have to imagine people watching this. So you spent two and a half million rubles with your, you and your father to give it a try. Yeah. That's hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and you know, I couldn't even explain in my words how bad it was. So my, my hands were already aching so much because all this heat's overheating. I wasn't, I didn't even realize what was waiting for me. And this was a real game. So, but I finished the Dakar and that was my, one of the biggest wins in my life. Well, you said you came in sixth or seventh out of how many? Is this like hundreds uh, of 40, people? No, 40 people. 40. In, but it's 40, the best of the best, you should understand. Mm. It's, uh, it's the limit in the class. So you cannot go extra than 40 people in the class. The organizers of the Dakar Rally only allow the best of the best to compete because it is an absolutely grueling race that has taken the lives of 28 competitors since it began in 1979. Sergei puts an incredible amount of work into preparing for the next Dakar to make sure he won't become number 29. So this ATV is the same replica which I used on Dakar when I won it in 2017. Oh, I see. So it's yeah. the same model or is it the very same one? No, it's not the very same one because the very same one is now in Sochi in the Olymp Olympic Museum. Oh, whoa. Yeah. So Pretty it, sweet. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> why, you know, I wanted to see the quad uh, somewhere with, which, which place it deserves. Mm -hmm. So it's Olympic Museum, I think it's a good place to be. What I'm thinking yeah. to do is, you know, to, to, to do something more, to mm -hmm. always expand my, you know, capabilities and that's why I'm, yeah. I switched to buggy because it's an, uh, another experience, yeah. new experience and I have to be the best there also. And I also want to become uh, the only winner in three categories on Dakar. Okay, so we have ATV, buggy, the third? Car. So you said for the season, it costs a million dollars, because I was going to say, how is that possible? A uh, million dollars for the men and the machines and yeah. all that. And that comes from? Sponsors. Uh, it's impossible to do the season for one million uh, rubles because only starting fees for Dakar costs 150,000 euros. So it's around $1,800. So you can imagine that uh, only starting fees, but you have to get a car, new car, two new cars. You get to pay the salaries every month. So it's, uh, it's also a big deal, believe me, paying salaries every month for 15 people. Uh, then uh, you need to fly there, you need to buy an equipment, you need to buy fuel, uh, you need to bring a technical assistance vehicle, you need to buy technical assistance vehicle, you need to buy some tools and so on 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 and millions and millions and millions of things. The days to Dakar are quickly counting down, but right now Sergei and his team are taking the opportunity to try to win one of Russia's most prestigious competitions, the Can-Am X-Race, which this year is in Karelia, 
right on the border with Finland. For me, this race is important because this race is a good, good practice for the for the Dakar again, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you get the speed here in huge marathons, long days. You don't go that fast, okay. but when you learn how to drive that fast, and when you are on huge marathon, you can get you know your speed slower, and you are in safe. You know, like this is very important to go 50% from what you can. So you can save your car, you can save yourself and be ready for the next day and day another and another and other days. Forest with a very pretty narrow yeah. road, is that abnormal or is that very common? Uh, it's track? very common uh, racetrack here in Karelia, for example. Yeah. When you come to Astrakhan, you will see huge, huge fields and uh, you can easily overtake there because you can go to the left side, to the right side and try to overtake. But of course it's dangerous because when you are moving on the road, you don't have huge bumps or if you have it, you can see it in the road. But yeah. when you overtake, you can hit something really bad and crash. Among the baddest, I think, on Dakar, yeah. when I was driving quad, so I broke two arms in one time. Oh. Yeah, so my two bones crushed. Uh, and uh, another one, I think, in France when I was doing GWRC, mm -hmm. uh, we flew over the mountain road, so mm -hmm. around 50 meters down and uh, 100 meters long. That was 50 meters down. Yeah, we've been flying through. You know, we when we started flying off the the hill, we saw this, uh, you know, like 100 years uh, trees, and we've been up on them. And when we flew, we were hitting one by one, stopping our car. So that what saved us. Only the trees? Only the trees, yes. <laughs> and what happened at the car? How did you specifically break the same spot on both arms? Uh, because I've been jumping off the dune and I hit another dune because there was, you know, like some hole, sand hole, and I hit and I hit it. So I stopped immediately from 70 to zero and my, <laughs> my muscles were okay. So I didn't flew off the quad, I didn't hit something, but my arms my just bones didn't work. I uh, pushed the button and then the helicopter came for, came for me. And you should understand that was that my hand was like this. It oh. was, yeah, it, it was a terrible, you know, injury. So I couldn't continue, that's for sure. And it was fifth or fourth day of Dakar. So otherwise, you know, I, I will get my hand cut. Even I, if I could fought the pain, I couldn't continue the race for sure. Was there ever any point where you're sort of like looking at your arms or you're uh, thinking about these injuries in you or other problems and you thought, man, maybe I should give this up. Maybe this is too much. <laughs> Has that ever thought ever crossed your mind? No, not because of breaking my arms. You know, I might think about this because, you know, I am sometimes worried because, uh, well, racing doesn't bring money, you know, and I already have three kids and I need to be sure that they will have something to eat and uh, they will have enough uh, funds to get, you know, the right education, the right medical and everything just in case something's needed. And the racing sometimes it breaks the system because it takes so much time and I cannot work as much as I need to get the proper funds. And what do the kids say about what you do? Um, to be honest, my kids, they still don't really understand what I do. Do your kids, do they get it or? Yeah. And I think they are proud of me and uh, they're proud of what I'm doing. So they're super happy when I win something and they uh, tell everybody that my father won something or won this race, won this race. My father is the first one. So they're happy and I'm happy because they're happy. Many people asking me this question, why I'm doing this. But uh, for me, it's just a pleasure. You know, I'm really fond of racing and uh, there are huge, most of people here are doing this because uh, on their own. So they pay their own so to get to compete here. Well, in my situation, I've got a better situation in one case. So uh, I'm, I have sponsors who pay for this. 
uh, but I get the responsibility uh, to show the good result. This is also, you know, a big thing. Um, why I'm doing so? Yes, it doesn't bring me so much money or something. It takes a lot of time, uh, but I love it. That's why I'm doing uh, doing racing, and uh, there are uh, hundreds and hundreds of people uh, here in uh, Karelia right now who are fond of racing and they uh, give up their job to take part in, in races like this. As for changing the world around me, uh, racing does not really change the world, but in racing we make um, a good story, story of being a hero. Uh, me and my co-driver Anton to become a hero. And then we go to the to children, we speak to them, we learn them how to drive ATVs and something, and that's the way how we change the world. We bring children into sports. We try to make their eyes burn with, with love to sports. So we show them how sport is nice, why it's nice. So most of the guys, when I'm saying, children who doesn't have parents or they're uh, in difficult situation you know uh, we visit the houses where they live and then we bring sports to them and we try to tell them how good is it and uh, I'm sure that not everybody of course but 10 5 percent of them they will change their world from you know like drugs alcohol and so on and yeah, so on yeah. to sports that's what made me strong and I hope that sport will make them strong. And also, I've got a cheaper, you know, cheaper uh, price for for buses and the metro. Oh, you get the, the discount because yeah. you're a hero. Wow, great. <laughs> yeah, and oh. I've, I, I saved tons of money. You, should, you couldn't imagine it.